of you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you're all doing good. I have something very important I would like to share with all of you. And uh, first I want to say that I'm sorry. I'm sorry that gone so long time since you have heard from me. It's more than, it's almost one and a half months. I actually had a update ready to give out last week, but then something happened that changed everything. And therefore, I could not come out with that update I've already done. But I'm now coming out with a new update instead, where there is a lot of more information. I, I know this update is a very long update, longer than any of the others we have done. But it's a very important update, and as you can hear, hopefully, hopefully, the last update from here. So I encourage you to listen to all of it. The last several weeks, I have been uh, waiting for my asylum case to come before the Board of Appeals after I got denied my asylum in immigration court back in December. So we were just waiting and we have been waiting and waiting because we knew that we could get a decision in every moment. And if there was a positive decision, I could actually be granted asylum right away and then I'll be released. So I've been very excited about it, of course, and we have been praying and waiting and then last week, last Wednesday, it happened. We got a decision, appeal denied. And I was like, what? Appeal denied. And it was just a big surprise to all of us. And it really feels like the immigration system really don't care about my case, about the facts. And they just want me to come out of America as fast as possible. But, but even if it was a surprise to us, it, it's not a surprise to God. And even my asylum now has been denied two times, I'm actually still excited because something happened last Wednesday and God spoke to me. And so many things have happened since. But before I share how God spoke to me I, and what happened there last Wednesday, I want to say that we will keep fighting the appeal. Even though it got denied, we will continue to the federal court. We don't stop here. And I know someone say, Torben, don't you think it's time to give up? Or think that this must prove, Torben, that you actually don't have a case here. Because first you lost or your appeal got denied in the immigration court, and then you lost the appeal for retry. So that must prove, Torben, that you don't have any case and it's time to accept it and give up. And I fully understand that there may be many people out there who think like that. And it could look like that from outside. And I also want to say that when I first came to America, I always said that if I lost, I would not appeal. I would just accept it right away and then I will leave. But, but then I got detained in the most absurd way. I got mandatory detained with no option of a bond, labeled as a national threat. And since then, I've heard of the most absurd accusation against me. Weapon smuggling, human trafficking, child misuse, money fraud. Yeah, some people even falsely, falsely accuse me of raping a handicapped girl back in Denmark. And this is just so absurd. It is crazy everything that's happening here. No charges, no proof, but it's just like I'm guilty without any proof, without any real investigation. I'm locked up here, and now I'm still here after 10 and a half months. So when I look at everything that's happening, it is just crazy. And then my immigration job in a closed online he hearing back in December, where he only admits five people to follow the online hearing, he allowed one person to come in who was not part of the team. One person was actually an enemy of mine, but somehow was allowed to come in by the job. And he illegally recorded the whole hearing, and then he put it on YouTube. Something like that had never happened before. <laughs> and our investigation about it had started, but it's just one of many crazy things that is happening here. And there's just something that is very wrong. Things that never happened before, things that is insane. It's almost like a movie, a really 
sad movie. So there's so many things that's going on here that is actually unconstitutional and even illegal, which have happened that I'm here today. And even we have a lot of evidence of all of these things and how it, where it's coming from and how it's actually connected back to Denmark. I'm still locked up after 10 and a half months. So I know with no doubt that I have a very strong case. And that is why I don't stop here. That is why we keep fighting. Another reason is that we don't give up and we want to take it to the federal court is that I never felt I received a fair trial in the immigration court. When the judge denied my case back in December, the first thing he said was that I overstayed. And that was also one reason that they denied my appeal. And I've heard that also from the immigration people here that I overstayed. And they've been saying that to journalists who have asked why I'm in jail. But, but it's just not true. At least not according to the truth and to my papers. When I came to the United States, it was on an ESTA visa. And that meant that I could stay here for three months legal in the country. In those three months, I spent many hours with my lawyer to find out what my options were. And then when I decided to seek asylum, I took the time to gather the evidence. And then I sent in the papers. And I sent them in within those three months I had. My lawyers have also told me it was very, very important that we sent the document in within those three months if I should have any change to get asylum because if you go after those three months you have almost already lost and we did it we sent the papers in i received the papers the receipt one week before the ESA expired and we thought everything was good but no why because a crazy thing happened and first it's the thing that happened proved that those people who are now behind the lies that have brought me here with human trafficking, weapons, smuggling. They already, that time, four years ago, was busy spreading lies. And already that time, they were in contact with immigration. Why? Because what happened was that they had contacted immigration four years ago, saying that I should have committed economic fraud, taking money from sick and elderly people, which of course is a lie. But already that time, immigration believed the lie, and without me hearing about it, without any real investigation or proof, they canceled my ESTA. In the middle of the three months period I had, and from that moment, according to their papers, I was illegal in the country and have therefore overstayed. But according to my papers and the truth, I was legal in the country and did not overstay. And it just shows how insane all of this is. So my lawyers and me, we thought everything was as it was supposed to be. And it was according to the truth. But according to the lies of the same people four years ago, already that time, I lost my case. This is at least how it feels like. And that is also one reason I want to take it out of the immigration court into the federal court to have some other eyes to look at what is happening. So it just shows a little of what we are up against. This is not just a normal immigration case. So when you see the big picture and everything that is happening, you know that it's the enemy who really wants to stop me from preaching the gospel in America. There's no doubt about it. And even people can think, Tom, you lost your case, time to give up. We are not going to give up. We will keep fighting because God is the one who has the last words and he has not said that we should give up. The same week I got denied by a field in immigration court, we actually had a very positive decision from the federal court. I want to explain that. On April 28th, we actually filed a lawsuit in the federal court to petition my unlawful and prolonged immigration detention. Yeah. This kind of lawsuit is called writ of habeas corpus. And it's a very difficult name to say. And it argued that my imprisonment is unconstitutional. And it's important to get out there that it was first time in all of this time that my case was brought before the federal court, and that is outside the immigration court. 
So first time ever we had our case in front of a federal court. Within one business day, one business day, the federal court issued a very strong decision ordering director for the Department of Homeland Security's division in charge of my imprisonment to justify why I'm still detained. A response so far is just unheard of. And this is just so positive for us. It's really, really good. And again, it was first time my case was brought before a federal court and I received a very positive decision within just one day. But then what happened the very next day, the Board of Appeal dismissed my appeal. And this is just so frustrating to say the least. But it is not the final decision. And I cannot be deported until the federal court had had the chance to review the effects of my case. So as you hear, there's just many, many things going on at the same time. And we will now go higher. We will bring my case before the federal court. Because as you can hear, I don't feel I've got any real change in the immigration court with everything that's going on here. And this can actually go very fast. Actually, it can all happen within a few weeks. And what is interesting is that just 20 minutes before I had to talk with the lawyer where I heard that my appeal was denied, someone shared a dream with me. A dream that got back in October, but they just felt it to share now. And in that dream, God spoke and said that I would be released and that this season I'm in now will be over in the month of May. And it was actually a confirmation for some things I had in my heart. So now we will see. But it really looks like in the end of May that this season is coming to an end. Wednesday when I heard that my appeal was denied and we decided to go higher, I also heard that it will only take maybe two, three weeks or four weeks. So that is in the end of my May. So it is very interesting what is happening now. But then something special happened. As soon as I put the phone on, God spoke to me. Very clear. And I want to share that. But first, just one more thing. I had an update I already wrote. I was ready to share last week. But uh, then, I, as I said, I needed to put it out. But in that update, I wanted to share two examples from the Bible that came to me. A uh, week before. The first was Acts 16, where we read how Paul and Silas was in jail and how God, in an amazing way, got them out of jail. With an earthquake, the chains fall off. And it's just a beautiful testimony when we read what happened in Acts 16. And we love testimonies like that. But then God reminded me of Acts 28, how God did not do the same with Paul later. There we actually read how Paul was two years in a house arrest and there was no earthquake, there was no chains falling off, that did not come out of strong testimony how God just set Paul free. But even we did not feel like that. God was actually doing some amazing things through that time and it brought a lot of proof. How? Because it was in that time Paul wrote Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Philemon. And we will not have had those four letters today. There has been a huge blessing all over the world for 2,000 years, a big blessing for me. And we will not have had those letters if Paul, God had let Paul come out right away, like he did in Acts 16. And then, was, then it was God spoke to me and said, sometimes we see it as a miracle where it happened right away and it become a testimony. But other times, he let us stay because he wanted to write something and bring out teaching. And this is what I have been busy with. I have been writing so much. Writing, writing, writing like I've never been writing before. But then back to the day last week. When I was finished with the conversation with the legal team last Wednesday, I said, God, what now? God, it looked like I would be here at least three, four weeks more. And then God spoke to me and he said, now, Paul, you write the book. And I said, what? But God, I've just been busy writing a lot of things the last days. 
and I just finished, I got a big project. But then God spoke again and said, Bob, now you write this book. And when he said that, I knew exactly what he wanted me to do. The book. The book out of the teaching God had been revealing to me in here. Since last Wednesday, I had been writing 12 chapters already. And, and this is what I've been doing last week. I've been writing 12 chapters in this book, and it is so good. I am so excited about this book. It is teaching God has been revealing to me in here, and, and it's just a big confirmation of a prophecy I actually first got when I came in here. A prophecy that said that God had put me here because he wanted to use me to help to restore the gospel back to the church and to bring reformation to the church and revelation of Jesus Christ to the people in America. And this is what God has been doing in my life. He has been revealing the gospel in a new way or in a very clear way. He has been transforming me. He has opened the scripture up to me in a way I would never ever have imagined before. And through that, I've done a whole teaching series and now I'm coming out with a book. A book with a teaching and I believe this is going to impact so many people out there and I'm very excited about it. So yes, I just see God's hand all over it. Even though my asylum was denied in a, in a appeal and I was like, okay, God, what now? <laughs> then I believe God is a let that happen for me to actually stay in here and finish this book. And I'm okay with that. Of course, it don't mean that it's not hard, especially for my wife, Lena, who was still fighting physical and with stress after all the crazy things she had needed to go through also. But I also see how God is working Lena in an amazing way. But it, of course, has been very hard for her with everything that's happened, and, and it is hard for both of us. But I want to say we both see God's hand in it, and we still have faith, and we believe that this season will soon be over. And I would actually say it has to be over because I really believe it's time to move on. And uh, I am so excited for the next season. I cannot wait to come out and share with all of you what God has been revealing and showing in here. I ask you again to keep standing with us uh, in hopefully the last uh, time of this season. Pray for Lena. Especially pray that he will experience the healing and the freedom. And pray for a breakthrough now when it comes to my case. That we finally will see that breakthrough, both in my case, but also my name will be clear for all of those crazy accusations. It is really important for me that, that they remove me as a natural threat. And my name is be cleared in all of this. And that God will actually reveal who is behind all of this. So please stay together with us, keep doing that and, and pray for us. And also if you feel led to help with the finances, because we are actually in a need for some big miracles right now when it comes to the funding, because this is going to cost extra money, uh, a lot more to take this to a higher court. But we need to go this way. There is no other, other option. We cannot give up now. So um, if you feel led to give, please do that. And, and please stand with us in prayer for that, that the money will go in. And uh, and you can do that through friendsoftalk.com and get a, and get text the Dr. Ball and all of that if, if you want that. And as I said before, I believe we are fighting not only for me, but we are fighting for something much greater. And therefore, it's not time to give up. We have faith. God is faithful. And that this is going to be the end. And in the end, we will see both an amazing testimony of God's hand, as we see in Acts 16. And at the same time, we will see some <laughs> transforming season come out of it, as we see in Acts 28. So I know this has been a very long update, uh, and hopefully the last update from here. Our legal team is also giving out an update with more information one of these next few days. So on Friends of Torben, you can go in and see their updates when they are coming out. 
And again, you can also support us in there. But God bless you all out there. Love you a lot. And look so much forward to uh, see you face to face and tell about what God has been doing. And I send the greeting for my family to all of you also. Thank you for keep praying for us, keep supporting us. We love you. Thank you for staying together with us. Let's see a revival and a breakthrough like never before. Blessings. Hi, hi.